Hello, I'm Sky Matsuhashi, founder of SmartPokerStudy.com, the place for poker players who are always striving to be better today than they were yesterday. Poker people, in episode 56, I added some killer stats to your essential HUD and taught you how to practice utilizing them through purposeful hand history reviews. Hey, poker people, thanks for tuning in, thanks for telling your friends, and thanks for spreading the word, because that's how we grow. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Audible. Audiobooks are great for helping you get through those menial tasks like commuting, washing the car, or cooking din din. Audible has over 180,000 titles from leading audiobook producers. My listeners get a free trial to Audible and an audiobook of their choice when they sign up through me at audibletrial.com slash smartpokerstudy. They even have the mental game of poker on audiobook. And this week's winner of the $10 ACR bankroll boost is Herman S. Aging Mr. Herman. Mr. Herman, you have a telephone call at the front desk. Yeah, when I saw his name come in via email, you know I had to find that clip. So, Herman signed up for ACR under me and is this week's winner. Congrats, Herman. And for your chance to win a free $10 bankroll boost, just sign up for ACR through the show notes page and make a deposit and send me an email confirmation. Use offer code SPSPOD in all caps to get the 27% rakeback deal. Okay, on to the poker. Today we're hitting part three in a three-part series on maximizing your HUD. Part one was all about the HUD essentials, which were the six or seven essential elements of your HUD in order to exploit your opponents. In part two, I added some key statistics for maximum pre- and post-flop exploitation, and we dove into practicing your HUD in hand history reviews. In this final part, I'll discuss the power of pop-ups with your HUD. The HUD itself is great, but it's the pop-ups that really allow you to get in there and rip your opponent's game to shreds. Alrighty, make sure to hit the show notes for today's episode at smartpokerstudy.com slash pod58 for everything I discussed today and to sign up for the weekly newsletter. Last week's newsletter contained a special hand history review video where I showed you how I utilized the HUD during my study sessions to determine if I made good choices or not. This week's exclusive will give you a walkthrough of one of my favorite pop-ups, the Steel Pop-Up, which I discussed just a little bit today. Now here it is, today's podcast mission. My mission for today is to teach you how you can utilize pop-ups most effectively with the minimum amount of information possible. The pop-ups that come with Poker Tracker 4 can be too complicated, with stats just all over the place, and organized in a very non-user-friendly way. I'll teach you the most important considerations for the stats within your pop-ups so that you can avoid overwhelm and actually put them to use. Okay, so far in this series, I've discussed HUD usage for online poker. I gave you the essential elements that every HUD needs, as well as additional stats that you can use to exploit your opponents. Now, this was all just for the HUD itself, you know, the main readout on top of every online table of poker. You've only got so much space to work with here, so all of these are... Uh, you know, of course, they're just total stats, meaning they count all instances of C bets or three bets or raising first in or V pipping, whatever the stat is. You know, it would be great if we could know these stats in a variety of conditions, like how often does he open from middle position? How often does he fold to C bet when in position? How often does he float the flop, the turn, or the river? And how often does he C bet in three bet pots? The reason we're discussing pop-ups today is that they're perfect for giving us more detailed information that can answer these types of questions. Using pop-ups, we can view stats based on in-position or out-of-position play. We can view them based on specific position, like the button or early position or the cutoff or small blind. Uh, we can also view them by or based on street, so on the flop, the turn, or the river. And we can also view it based on pot size, you know, two bet pots or three bet or greater pots. By getting more detailed statistical analysis on our opponents, we're better able to exploit their tendencies. I'll cover each of these conditions next, along with the stats useful for each. 
So first up is in position or out of position. We all know that being positionally aware is super, super important in poker. And playing in a position allows for better decisions to be made, which is going to likely lead to more profits. Likewise, knowing how your opponents play uh, how it might differ by position also helps you make better decisions and more profits. For example, you're up against a player with a thousand hands. Maybe he folds to see bets a total of 50, uh, 50% of the time. You're in position on the flop and he checks to you. Should you see bet bluff here? Well, folding to see bets 50% of the time isn't really a great indication that your bluff will succeed. But what if you look at his fold to see bet when out of position? and it shows he folds 80% of the time, then heck yes, you should throw out that C-bet bluff here. He folds 80% to C-bets out of position, so you can expect a fold, which means betting with any two cards is profitable. And if he calls to continue in the hand, no big deal. You're making money 80% of the time. The other 20%, the most you're losing, is the C-bet that you make right then and there, as you won't commit any more chips after his call because you know he has top pair, two pair, a set, a straight, whatever it is. He's only calling with the goods. So here are some stats that you want in your pop-ups based on relative position. So you want to know C-bet in position and out of position, fold to C-bet, raise versus a C-bet, check raising, fold to a check raise, float bets, fold to float bets. You of course want to know donk betting, which is automatically out of position, but you want donk betting within your pop-ups and you also want fold to donk betting. Great. So those are all the in position and out of position condition stats. The next condition we'll talk about is specific position. So seeing some stats by specific position allows you to see how our opponents view each position. You'll sometimes encounter players who open in the MP and the LP maybe like 15 to 25 percent of the time. But for some reason, their early position open is 35 percent. These guys are EP stealers early position stealers, and they deserve to be 3-bet relentlessly, especially if you're in position versus them, and if they are if they have like post-flop leaks, you know. You can also imagine how useful it is to know that a player 3-bets 15% from the big blind, but only 3% from the small blind. Maybe this guy has an overall 3-bet of 9% when you average all of his positions, you know. But if he's raising from the small blind, or 3-betting, I mean, from the small blind, it's strictly a value 3-bet, and you can ditch most hands. But if he's 3-betting from the big blind, where his percentage is 15%, then maybe you can come in with a nice 4-bet re-steal or even a call to play him in position with a stronger hand. You know, that's up to you. So here are some great stats to have by specific position in your pop-ups. First is VPIP, you know, every position. If you know that a guy uh, has an early position VPIP of only 5%, but then a button VPIP of 30%, he's probably pretty positionally aware, you know. Some other stats are raise first in, call the 2-bet, 3-bet, fold to 3-bet. You also want to know 4-bet by position. Squeezing by position as well is always good. Some guys squeeze every opportunity they get from the button in the cutoff, you know. Uh, you also want to see attempt to steal, Fold versus steal, fold versus the re-steal, which is the three bet after somebody makes an open raise uh, steal. And you also want to know all the different limp stats like limp call, limp fold, and limp raise by position as well. Okay, the next condition to talk about is the buy street condition. Now, seeing stats by street is super useful. I've discussed it before, and actually, in last week's newsletter, I covered it specifically. But there is such a thing as street honesty. So knowing a player's total c-bet is 66%, that's great to know. But seeing that it is on the flop at 90%, and it's on the turn at 40%, that means he's totally turn honest. And if he barrels the turn, he's likely got a good hand or very solid draw. Let's say you're facing a river bet, for a different example. Uh, which would you rather call with a weak top pair hand? The player with river aggression frequency at 66% or the player with an aggression frequency at 25%? Yep, I would call the 66% river aggression frequency with a top pair hand or a weak top pair hand because he's more likely betting marginal hands. The other guy who rarely bets and if he does bet the river does have a likely stronger hand. So I'd probably fold those weak top pair hands against him. And here are some great stats to have by street in your pop-ups. Of course, C-bet, fold to C-bet, 
and raise versus c-bet. You also want the check raise, fold to check raise, and it's great to have the float bets by street and the fold to float, as well as the donk bets and the fold to donk bets. And aggression frequency, like I just mentioned, is a great one to have by street as well. It's really weird when you see a guy has a crazy high flop and turn aggression frequency and then a very low river aggression frequency. These are guys that you can call the flop and the turn on when he decides to check the river. Go ahead and fire that big bet. He'll fold fold most of the time because he only bets the river with the goods. All right, the last condition to talk about is 2-bet or 3-bet pots. And it's good to see some very common stats broken down by 2-bet and 3-bet or more pots. Some players really fight for those 3-bet pots. And seeing a C-bet at 80% in 3-bet pots versus maybe 55% in 3-bet pots really tells you how the player treats those bloated pots. You'll attack the guy that bets too much and tend to avoid the less active guy in these pots. So here are some great stats to have 3-bet pot versions of in your pop-ups. C-bet, fold to C-bet, raise C-bet, fold C-bet to a raise, fold to float, fold to donk, and fold to probe. I know you'd like to win a free $10 every Tuesday to jumpstart your online poker career, so make sure you sign up for an America's Card Room account through me for 27% rate back and a 100% first deposit bonus of up to $1,000. Just use offer code SPSPOD in all caps. Enter the code, create your account, make your first deposit, then email me your newly minted ACR screen name, and you'll be entered into the weekly drawing for a free $10. I'll announce the winner in the podcast every Tuesday and transfer the $10 to your America's Cars Room account. And soon we'll be holding weekly free rolls exclusive to my listeners. So get in on the action and open your own America's Cards Room account today by clicking the banner at the top of this episode's show notes or go to smartpokerstudy.com slash ACR for more details and your chance to win $10 weekly. Make sure you use that offer code SPSPOD. Okay, so I just talked about a lot of different stats and a lot of different conditions, of course, and it might be you know, really difficult for you to listen to me right then and to kind of understand exactly what I'm talking about without giving it a lot of thought. Well, I have a little solution for you. Go ahead and visit the show notes page. You'll find screenshots of all my different pop-ups that I use there, uh, you know, where, where I have them broken down by conditions and even by sections and different pop-ups and styles of pop-ups and everything. I actually use six different pop-ups in my HUD uh, with you know, a few stats listed on each. And I'll name them here right now with the stats that each contain, but make sure you hit that show notes page, which was smartpokerstudy.com slash pod 58 to see how I organize my pop-ups. And this will give you a really good idea of how small and simple a pop-up can be. They're much... Uh, um, you know, I guess lighter than the default pop-ups in Poker Tracker 4. I have them color-coded by section with relevant stats next to each other to make referencing them much easier and quicker when you're in game. So if you have trouble currently with those Poker Tracker 4 default pop-ups, make sure you check mine out and maybe do some, um, you know, re- revisions or even creating your own pop-ups, uh, to make them more user-friendly. So the first pop-up I have is a raise first in and fold to three bet pop-up. And of course it has VPIP, raise first in, fold to three bet, four bet, PFR, um, attempt to steal, fold versus steal, fold versus re-steal, and all the different limp stats on it. The next pop-up I have is a three bet pop-up, of course. So it's got three bet, the squeeze stat, fold to four bet, and five bet or more stats on it. Also has call two bet by position, three bet by position, and squeeze by position. And then I've got a really interesting part right here. I have different three bet stats versus other positions. So for example, three bet versus an early position open, three bet versus middle position, three bet versus cutoff, three bet versus button, and three bet versus small blind. This is great to see how their three bet changes based on the different positions that decide to open the pot. And of course, I have the steel pop-up. This is actually one of my favorites. I steal so much when it comes to actually every form, cash, sit and goes, and MTTs. I'm constantly stealing those cutoff and button positions. I try to abuse the guys in the blinds when I'm in position right there. So in the steal pop-up, I've got my just, you know, uh, attempt to steal percentage as a total. I also have the steal or fold to three bet stats. So 
when you steal and then decide to fold to a three bet. Basically, it's fold to a re-steal stat. I also have just the plain fold to steal, call steal, three bet versus steal, and the all important big blind fold versus the small blind steal. That's the steal pop up right there. It's a really good, really simple one, but it's super useful. Um, if for, if, if anything else, uh, just go to this, go to the show notes page just for that pop up because it's a killer one for all you guys looking to increase your aggression. You know, one of the awesome things about increasing your, uh, just, just stealing aggression, you know, in the cutoff and the, and the button, when you increase the amount that you're raising there, that increases your overall VPIP and PFR so much so that it looks like you're a lag donk when you just do a lot more raising in those two positions, thereby kind of tricking your opponents in, into thinking that you're a lag and a donk. And then you can hit them when you're raising from the earlier positions with a stronger range. All right, the final, I'm sorry, nope, nope, got two more pop-ups to talk about. The first one is the C-bet pop-up, which has a C-bet, fold the C-bet to a raise, betting in position, betting out of position, um, as well as check raise, donk, uh, fold to float, and all that kind of stuff. And I have the fold to C-bet pop-up, which of course has fold to C-bet, raising versus C-bets, uh, fold to a bet in position, aggression frequency, fold to C-bet, raise C-bet, Floating, donking, pro bets. I mean, this one has everything. It's a really good one as well. So uh, I know that, you know, just spouting off all these stats and conditions can be kind of tough to understand. So just make sure you hit those show notes at, to see all of these different pop-ups and how I have them sorted. It'll really give you a good idea of how you can effectively use your pop-ups better. And I hope that all this pop-up talk has gotten you fired up to get in there and create your own pop-ups. If you'd like to save yourself time, though, you can just purchase my smart HUD for Poker Tracker 4. It includes three different HUDs for cash, six max uh, MTTs and sit and goes and nine max MTT and sit and goes. You'll also get six different pop-ups to really help you exploit your opponents. Yes, I discussed five of my pop-ups today, but there's an additional one that you'll have to see to believe as a bonus for podcast listeners use or visit smartpokerstudy.com slash smart HUD 30 for 30% off my new smart HUD for poker tracker four challenge. Here's my challenge to you for this episode. Commit to utilizing one of your pop-ups for each session this week. If it's the default tools pop-up, for example, in Poker Tracker 4, um, or maybe your own CBIT pop-up or my steel pop-up if you purchase the Smart HUD, which, whichever one you decide to use, your goal this week will be to use it for every relevant decision made at the tables. Write out on a piece of paper each element of the HUD to help train yourself in its contents and their placements. Color code backgrounds or fonts to help you spot import stats for quick reference. Don't consider your task complete until you've mastered this one pop-up, even if it takes you 10 sessions to do so. Once mastered, move on to the next. Now it's your turn to do something positive for your poker game. Now get it on. So just a quick recap, I discussed the four conditions to view your pop-up stats by. And once again, they were in position or out of position play, specific positions, street by street action, or two bet or three bet pots. I also showed you my pop-ups and gave you the exact stats that I use in each and every one. And if you don't have Poker Tracker 4 yet, you can get a free 30-day trial by using my affiliate link. You don't have to commit or make a purchase, and going through me helps to support the show, and I love the support. Thank you very much. Visit smartpokerstudy.com slash pokertracker4, and that's all one word with the number 4 at the end, to be taken directly to the Poker Tracker 4 website where you can download your free trial. If you decide to purchase it through me, email me your purchase confirmation, and I'll send you my smart HUD for free. And... If you're not already there, head over to the show notes. Please do so. It's very important for today's podcast. Uh, it's at smartpokerstudy.com slash pod 58 for everything I mentioned and screenshots of all of my pop-ups. Thank you so much for listening today. I love feedback, so hit me with it through the show notes, or you can also send an email to sky at smartpokerstudy.com, tweet me at smartpokerstudy, or post in the Facebook group at smartpokerstudy.com slash discuss, and keep sending those questions in. 
Alrighty, poker people, be sure to come back this Friday for another Q&A where I lay down some answers to them questions. And next week on Tuesday's podcast, we may have a very special guest. I'm still trying to work out the details, so keep your fingers crossed. Of course, word of mouth is the best advertising, and I thank you so very much for sharing the show with other poker people. It only grows with your help, so I'm asking you to share it with someone who will get value from it just as you do. Until next time, study smart, play much, and make your next session the best one yet.